stretch of I-40 through the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina can make drivers nervous as they go through the Pigeon River Gorge. There's heavy traffic, narrow curves, and a growing danger with an increase in large animals trying to cross the interstate. WBIR 10 News reporter Jim Matheny shows us the effort to make I-40 safer for both drivers and wildlife. On Interstate 40 near the Tennessee and North Carolina line, Traffic stops in both directions for bear cubs clumsily climbing over a concrete divider to keep up with their mother. Come on, baby. Come on, keep going. This wildlife crossing has a happy ending. There we go. <laughs> but this outcome is rare. It's really hard to look at. It's black bear hit east of the North Carolina Welcome Center. Yeah, welcome to North Carolina. Terrible. Jeff Hunter with the National Parks Conservation Association says safe passage for animals on this stretch of I-40 is an anomaly, especially for bear cubs. Because it's a concrete barrier, and that's a death trap. And we've seen on a number of occasions multiple cubs hit in the road, and they just they don't have a chance. I know one year that there was at least 70 roadkill bears on that section of interstate. 70 roadkill bears, and that is a lot. In what we don't know, we see the ones that's on the side of the road. We do not see the ones that are hit and actually run off and are injured and, and die. We don't see those, and that number could even be higher than the ones we see lying on the side of the road. When crews cut the center state through the Pigeon River Gorge in the 1960s, they built more than a road. They built a noisy barrier that separated a prime piece of wildlife habitat. Wildlife for millennia has been moving back and forth on this landscape. Wildlife, needless to say, have not evolved with roads. Today, there's more traffic than ever. 26,000 vehicles a day fly by on this section of I-40. And there's more big wildlife. We have a growing elk population. We have four times the number of bears today that we had 40 years ago. The chance of a collision is much, much higher. But between the high-speed traffic, the impassable man-made cliffs, and the concrete dividers, there are some places wildlife can safely cross, and they do. There are culverts underneath the road. This is a box culvert over here to my right that Duke Energy uses to access their facilities at Waterville Dam. All kinds of critters are using it. And one of the busiest spots for animals to get from one side of the interstate to the other is here at these double tunnels. They use this essentially as a land bridge, never having to step into traffic, which proves if you give them an option, they'll use it. Right now, we're in a research mode. And what we're starting to see is some hot spots. With that information, these groups can come up with life-saving solutions. It's usually an overpass with fence or an underpass with fence to kind of corral them into a natural funnel. A wildlife overpass looks very much like a bridge that goes on the highway, but it's naturally vegetated. There'll be trees and shrubs instead of pavement up there. Hunter says wildlife crossings in Canada have practically eliminated collisions with bears and elk. So they've invited experts from Canada. We had the highway engineer come down here to consult with us, to look at this 28-mile corridor and offer some suggestions. And the DOT has been willing to meet with us and entertain different ideas for wildlife passage. Hunter says the research will take another year and a half, and any solution they come up with will take a large investment. Just one wildlife overpass can cost millions of dollars. But Hunter says that's cheaper than paying for the ongoing risk of hitting wildlife around every curve. That's property damage, it's a human safety issue. Also, what is the value of a black bear to the economy here of Western North Carolina and East Tennessee? It's huge. People come here to see bears. If you can provide an opportunity for safe passage, over generations, bear and elk and deer will teach their young to use those structures. It will keep the animals out of the road. This is a win-win for future generations of humans and wildlife. And make one of the busiest spots in the mountains a place with more happy trails for drivers and wildlife and fewer kills on the road. It just seems like the right thing to do. In the Pigeon River Gorge, Jim Athene, WBIR 10 News.
This research could have very good timing. In the next few years, North Carolina DOT will replace five bridges in the gorge and could make wildlife crossings part of that construction.